Blog Talk Radio. Your journey begins right now. From the west coast of British Columbia to you listening around the world and blasting out into the universe, <coughs> welcome to tonight's edition of Spaced Out Radio. Call us at 1 607 203 5344. Tweet us at Spaced Out Radio. Find Dave on Facebook at Spaced Out Radio. Or Skype us at Spaced Out Radio. Now, here's your host, Dave Scott. Good evening and welcome to Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott, and thank you so much for tuning in to SpacedOutRadio.com as we come in from the frozen Canadian tundra, battle our way past the wild animals, sidestep Bigfoot, and enter Uncle Jimbo's cabin, stoke the fire, heat this place up, and now broadcast you live on this Monday night, early Tuesday morning if you're on the East Coast. Here at Space Out Radio, we do this thing seven days a week. We are your official one-stop shop when it comes to the conspiratorial, paranormal, supernatural, spiritual, and so much more. If you're on social media like I am, you can follow us on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio. You can give our Facebook page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show, and you can ask to join our private Spaced Out Radio group, as well as our other group, Podcast Central. On Instagram, I can be followed at Dave Scott, S-O-R. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Spaced Out Radio Show, and once again, our website is spacedoutradio.com. At this time, as we do every night, we like to welcome in our listeners taking part in the Spaced Out Radio chat room, along with Paranormal Into the Night and Paranormal Forum. If you go to our website, spacedoutradio.com, you can click on Cat's Corner. Psychic Catherine Fallman will answer one lucky listener's submitted question per week. Tonight's show is brought to you by Rivulet Reiki and Readings. They provide healings in person or at a distance. Space Out Radio listeners receive a 10% discount on pricing. Purpleplates.com help heal your body, mind, and soul. Drop into their site and heal yourself today. 80,000 people a month read the new Agora newspaper. Find out what's happening on the other side of politics, health, supernatural, paranormal, and so much more. And if you are an owner of an iPhone and you have a dollar, you can download the Spirit Story Box. Spirit Story Box, the official ghost hunting app of Spaced Out Radio. I apologize for my voice tonight because I am battling a cold, and it's only affecting my voice. So you have to bear with me because the show must go on, and there's no way I'm letting a little bit of a cold screw up what we are doing here on a nightly basis. Trust me, my head feels great. My body feels great. Just I got this scratchy throat thing going on. I am pumped up with Advil, cold, and sinus. I've got Vicks all over my body, including the bottom of my feet with socks on. And we are fighting it. But nonetheless, we are going to do this show. I almost took the night off to try and get the healing. But then I thought, you know what? What else am I going to do? I'm going to sit at home and say, damn it, I wish I should have broadcasted the show. So, I'm a trooper. Been through worse, played hockey through worse. So, we're going with it. you got to bear with me, though, with the sound of the voice. I promise you it will get better. The last Monday of every month, we are joined by a good friend of this show and host of Space Out Radio's Cosmic Passport, Elizabeth Anglin. Elizabeth is talented in so many facets of the paranormal and supernatural that every time we bring her on, we have the ability to talk about something new. Tonight, though, we are talking about one of my favorite topics. Wouldn't it be nice to know that you could communicate telepathically with animals? Wouldn't it be nice knowing what your dog, cat, or horse is thinking? What's hurting them? What do they like and dislike? What about wild animals? Can we talk to them as well? Supernatural creatures like Bigfoot. Do we have the ability to speak with them also? Can they tip us off? Elizabeth is a psychic medium, an ET contactee, and an animal communicator. Tonight she will fill us in and let us know if we have the capability of animal communication or if we need to be trained as a psychic to have that personal chat with the animals tame or wild that surround us. Her website is elizabethanglin.com. Elizabeth, thank you so much. I know you are battling a cold as well, but we're going to do this thing. 
Let's do it. How are you, hon? <laughs> I'm doing okay. I might have to mute myself if I start sneezing. Mine is more sneezing. You're just coughing and throat and mine is, oh, my gosh, i got to sneeze and I can't stop. So, um, But it just seems to be, you know, it's that time of the year. It's, it's going around. So uh, I'm doing oh, really good. Sure. I'm glad. I'm glad I survived for, E. coli from two weeks, so I'm still alive, and that's good. That's all good. I'm happy for sure. So. And I want to, and I, and I want you to know, and I want the audience to know that if all of a sudden I am in dead air, it's because I'm trying to clear my throat, or I'm coughing, or having a sneezing attack. So it's not that I'm being knocked off the air; it's that I'm just trying to make sure that I sound okay and don't have a sneezing attack so my mute button may be on a little bit longer tonight so i'm just giving everybody a forewarning on that so elizabeth we've talked about animal communication before and we're going to get into that pretty heavily tonight because i have some real interesting questions to ask you especially about communicating with wild animals because i had an experience about a week and a half ago and i think it worked but I wanted to get your opinion on it. So we'll get into that. But first I want for our audience who has never maybe heard about your story, why don't you take the time to explain a little bit about you when you started developing your own abilities leading up to your ET contact and communication with animals? Well, I was really young. My first, I mean, I'm a lifelong ET experiencer at the I'm now a contactee. My relationship has changed, so I don't get abducted, at least not very often if I do, not enough to be troublesome at all. So I'm mainly a contactee on the ET front. And what happened with me was I had a speech impediment when I was four. I was already had remembered an ET experience at three. Um, and then at four, I my elves were wise, and my family was making fun of me one night at dinner because I wanted to tell them a story with a lot of L's and Y's in it, or a lot of L's in it, which were Y's. And, and I ended up saying, instead of leave me alone, I said, leave me a yone. And, they, and I just kept repeating it, and they laughed louder and louder. And so I ran outside to the horses. We had a, a group of horses that were our family horses to a mare that was kind of my nanny mare, and I sat on a picnic table by her while she was eating some corn shucks and cried. Oh, it was the worst, it was the worst, most humiliating, first first most humiliating moment of my life. And um, I was so mad and so humiliated by my family. So I, she kind of looked over the fence at me, and so I walked up to her to pet her nose and, and cry and spill my guts to her about how unlucky I was to have such a horrid family who made such fun of me. And all of a sudden, she bit me really hard on my little hand, my little four-year-old hand. And, you know, she actually struck me like a horse will do when they're not happy with you. And she'd never done anything like that before. And my mind cleared. It just became completely clear. And I heard a voice in my head say, be grateful for what you have. It could be worse. You could be a horse and unable to talk at all. And then I saw, in the midst of this message, I saw all these pictures, rapid fire pictures of the things that had happened to her where people were unjust or cruel or she had been abused. The guy had hit her in the head with two by fours in a lumber yard she had been kept at. And, you know, she, she had had a hard time, and she couldn't tell anyone because she was a horse, and she couldn't speak. And that was, from that point on, I knew I could communicate with her. I had some hard times, when, you know, when I was seven, eight, nine. I kept wanting to communicate with turtles and ducks and geese, and, and that was just not working. <laughs> and so, um, but I always had the ability to get, you know, get pictures from her, get feelings from her, get words from her, and vice versa, to really feel like she knew what, even if I wasn't talking, she knew how I was feeling. She knew, and I could visualize things, and she would would respond to them. I didn't have to tell her verbally. So that, you know, that went on. She died when I was 15, 
and that was pretty terrible for me. But I and uh, and then I realized I was an experiencer um, when I was 23, an ET experiencer. And uh, what happened a few years later is I got so tired researching my experiences. I had uh, chronic fatigue, and so I and I was sick all the time. And during this research project with John Mack, not his fault that I was sick all the time. I was just overly tired and um, and stressed out, and my you know my energy system was all adjusting. And I left Boston to go to New Mexico where I learned Reiki. And within a couple of months, animals were talking to me. And the first one that talked to me, like, said actual words in my head was my vet dog. And this was an old school Air Force vet tough guy. And his colleague had an issue. His colleague had a skin issue under all of his fur. His colleague was gagged and gagged and blind and barked all the time. And I was there one day to feed the dog. It was a temporary thing. The vet was in Santa Fe at the racetrack and couldn't feed these animals. So I went to go feed the dog. And, and um, Wags is looking at me, barking. He stops eating his food. He looks and he, and he says, put your hand, my rump, my rump. Put your hands on my rump because I had Reiki. He wanted a Reiki treatment. And so I did. And the Reiki just came pouring out of me into his rump. You know, it was serious. There was something really serious and clear going on there. And I had to get back to the office. And so I did that for like four or five minutes and said, I'm sorry, Rex, I got to go. And he barking at me as I'm leaving. No, don't stop. Put your hands on my, my rump. Is it, I need you. And so I go back to the office and I tell the vet when he checks in, you know, when you go home, could you check Wax's rump? And he says, what do you mean, check Wags' rump? What, what's that about? I said, well, he just seemed to want some attention for his rump when I was there. Well, what do you mean he wanted attention? Well, he, you know, he kept motioning back toward his rump like he wanted me to do something. I didn't tell him about the Reiki or anything else. Vet gets home late at night, checks out his rump, and finds these um, maggots, huge maggots growing out of it, and skin condition all over his rump, and he ends up staying up most of the night, pulling maggot by maggot out of his skin after he shaved the dog, put salve all over him, you know, taking tweezers and doing skin surgery. I get a call the next morning <laughs> with a really grumpy vet going, uh, so my first appointment, I'm going to be late today, and I'm like, okay, do I give him a reason? Yeah, it's your fault. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, what did I do? I'm going to get fired. Oh, my gosh. And he comes in a couple hours later with these pictures of wags and rumps and the, and the surgery and the maggots. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And he keeps saying, how did you know? And I just all I could say is, well, he told me. I can't tell you. I could hear him saying my well. So I kind of peeved him. But um, that was the beginning. After that, I was working on horses in the clinic, and and uh, he was throwing things at me, and the other vet was throwing things at me, throw, you know, animals to work on, and um, that was how I started. Um, but Reiki was great for me. Anybody who's an experiencer, an epic here, an experiencer, I'm going to give a plug for Reiki. If you're feeling sickly down, out of sorts, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, Reiki can help you make your energy, uh, it, it can help you attune your energy so that you can more easily deal with any sort of alien stuff. And it can also help you do animal communication. It's not the first thing you should do, but uh, the first thing I would say would be Zen meditation or really good meditation where you have to sit and witness your own mind for a while. Um, so you know, you know, you get your sort of jabber walking mind to shut up and you know what the difference is between your own thoughts and somebody else's thoughts or your own thoughts or something from spirit. And meditation can do that for you. The time where you just sit and clear your mind. Um, but then after that, things like Reiki, um, 
are are especially Reiki is exceedingly good to to start out with animal communication. So that's my story. Right. We are talking with Elizabeth Anglin tonight, animal communicator, Reiki master, psychic medium, alien contactee, just a woman of all trades here, and that's why we have her on the final Monday of every month. Her website is elizabethanglin.com. Now, Elizabeth, I was very shocked when you were telling uh, us moments ago that you told the vet to look at the at the hind of the horse, and he found the maggots in there. He took mm-hmm. you pretty seriously. You caught a pretty good break there that he was absolutely listening to you because doctors of any kind, whether they're human doctors or veterinarians, they're men and women of silence. Uh, pardon me, of, of science. Mm-hmm. So for him to actually take that step further and believe you and test you out, you caught quite a break there. Well, you know, it, it wasn't, it was, the way that I put it to him was, I, I didn't tell him that that I had Reiki, his dog. I just said, well, you know, on the phone before he went home, I just said, well, you know, if you could just please check out his rump, you know, that would make me feel better. I, it was it was that kind of thing. You know, it just seemed like he wanted some attention. I, you know, if he, you know, if you check him out, that'd probably be his good idea and, and checking out a dog's hind end you know through thick fur it's not that hard if you own them I mean the dog's going to be there with you but um yeah he could have I I didn't know if he would or wouldn't because he was so grumpy about it um I thought maybe he wouldn't do anything but he didn't but he also was somebody he was a vet who was really grumpy with people but he really really loved animals and um he was an interesting energetic uh, teacher he was always looking for when people were lying and he had a sense when human beings were lying and one of the and he would energetically poke holes like he would energetically poke people where they were being untruthful and then he'd get really like "Ah," you know like mean if you were untruthful in any way and that was something that as I was doing more and more Reiki and my energy field was filling out and the holes in my energy field were filling out, he would start to come into the office and he'd look for somewhere that he could, you know, find where I was weak energetically or where I might not be in my energetic integrity. And and I and I saw him. Like he was even though he was a man of science, he was subconsciously doing a form of energy work, a form of healing work in a sort of negative way where, you know, a lot of people were terrified of him. He made life really hard for you if you had an energetic imbalance of some kind where you weren't truthful. So um, it was a very interesting learning experience working with him and having this unfold at the same time to have that sort of negative teacher, that scary negative teacher who changed over time and became friendlier and friendlier as my energy body became fuller and fuller. And it was a lot of good reinforcement because you're going from somebody who's really terrorizing. I was going, he he really terrorized. Like people quit at his office all the time and 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 all of a sudden I wait and then there were, you know, several more months and I still had to quit and it was several more months. <laughs> you know, it was like, oh, you know what's going on here because he wasn't terrorizing me. But um, anyway... It's interesting what people think they are versus what they are. You have people running around doing healing work, and they'll be telling you they're atheists or they're scientists. And they're actually some reincarnated master of Qigong, and they don't even know what they're doing. And and that's that's really interesting when you meet one of them. So look out for those people. Don't just take Don't just take what they say they are at face value. They may be a lot more than that. Right. Elizabeth, how responsive are animals to telepathic communication? Very. And they're very responsive to energy healing, too. Um, but you can't have expectations that they will change their behavior to something that is out of, out of the league of animals. You have to have reasonable expectations for what their behavior will be. And and sometimes what I find is that 
you know, um, animal communication is really good for, inter you know, animal behavior within the animal family in a home. So, like, if two dogs don't like each other and then we get them together and we have a conversation, a lot of the negative behavior between them will, will change. A uh, dog and a cat don't like each other. A couple cats don't like each other. Three cats are beating up another cat. It's sort of like being the the the, the advisor to the social order, but you, but you can't expect that, you know, a puppy that has just been taken from its litter and you don't want to have the puppy in the bed with you or in your room with you and you sleep, don't call an animal communicator because you want to crate the dog downstairs, leave it alone, and expect it not to whine. I guess that's what I would say. You're not manipulating animals when you do animal communication. You're smoothing and healing herds and allowing two-way conversations and allowing people and animals to understand each other. And if you're doing energy work, you're actually maybe doing some some physical, emotional healing as well. But I try to avoid the clients who want me to work some sort of behavioral training miracle that isn't, it's like, you know, people, this is your objective. This is your subjective desire for what that animal should be. And it's, it's not based in a kind of animal reality. Does that make sense? Absolutely. As we, as we, uh, Elizabeth, let me ask you this then. It, does it mainly have to stay along the lines with pets because we have that personal connection, whether it's a dog, cat, gerbil, hamster, fish, maybe outdoor animals like, like a donkey or a horse or a cow or a goat. Does it have to be that personal connection that you have with the animals that really brings the telepathy forward? Well, um, the animals in the wild don't like to get too distracted and they don't, um, they don't have a lot to say to humans because they have their own work that they're doing to stay alive. Um, so, you know, if you want to talk to one, you want to do it after they've had a good meal. So if you notice that there's like a raptor that's just eaten a, a rodent or, uh, you know, something else that, that just seems to be resting but not asleep, that's a good time to open up a communication. Um, but if, you know, animals are busy doing something else, wild animals, you know, they they do have to hunt and forage and, and they can, you know, if they don't eat enough, they can get ill. And, and if you're trying to be, a lot of wild animals think of us as being very selfish and self-centered and kind of stupid. And I don't mean that meanly i'm not anti-human but that's to say i mean i've gotten some wild animal slaps on the wrist which are you know you just want to talk to me because you know you're it's another feather in your cap and i'm like no no if you're busy you know i've gotten to the point where i'm like no no if you're busy i'm i'm sorry to disturb you you know i i didn't mean to offend and you know i'll let you go on but there are other times when you know they're fed, they're feeling well, they're just hanging out. You can have a good conversation with a wild animal. But you have to be willing to take some criticism because the wild world at this point really kind of does want to dish us out some criticism for, for kind of not getting it. We're not getting our place on this world. And we are closed off to to the whole, to the energy, to the thought, to allowing animals to have habitats with poisoning things. Um, we don't think very complicated thoughts, but we think that we do. We tend to think a lot of dramatic, selfish thoughts, which, are, which is not, animals don't perceive that as being smart. Um, so if you want to get wild animals, you've got to be willing to, Learn about what their issues are. I would say learn about them, their behaviors. Don't anthropomorphize them to, or, and don't demonize them, but learn about, you know, read some really good 
animal behavior book, uh, read about the species that you want to talk to. And, and, and if you get one on the line, make sure you get it when it's a good time for it to talk, not when you want to talk. Because they'll shut you off. They'll say, yeah, talk to the hand or the feather or the, you know, the paw. <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. See you later. Bye. So. Wonderful. Elizabeth, I'm going to put you on hold here as we are going to go to our first break of the night. We are talking animal communication with psychic medium and animal communicator Elizabeth Anglin. Her website is elizabethanglin.com. Once again, apologize about the voice. It's this damn cold. I feel great. However, the throat and chest just not cooperating tonight. So you have to bear with me as we're going to be right back with the second half hour on Spaced Out Radio. This is Patrick Webster Small, and I'm going to bring you the Webster Phenomena right here on Spaced Out Radio, Monday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. Every week, I'm going to bring you the freshest information on the globe. I'm bringing you guys the truth, extraterrestrials in the sky, prophecy, chemtrails, rainbow spot, the seventh angel, biblical skies, ancient gods, ghosts, spirits, see it, hear it. So let's do this every Monday night. I'll see you back here at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, how can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit. And expect a miracle. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Did you know that Spaced Out Radio is live seven days a week? This is Jim Tyson, host of Spaced Out Weekend. You can listen to my show, Spaced Out Weekend, every Saturday and Sunday night starting at 1 a.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Pacific. On Spaced Out Weekend, we like to delve into the paranormal, even the newest technologies that have enhanced modern-day ghost hunting. And sometimes, we'll get a little creative and dabble into the crypto world, UFOs, and much, much more. So tune in at www.spacedoutradio.com on the weekends and listen to me, Jim Tyson, on Spaced Out Weekend. Hi there, this is Jolene with Rivulet Reiki and Reading, and I want you to relax. Let me help you chill out and get in touch with your body, mind, and soul. In this busy world, sometimes we need to let go, and this is where I can help. Visit my website, rivuletrnr.wix.com forward slash rivuletrnr, or my Facebook page, Rivulet r and to set up an appointment for relaxation, Reiki, or readings, no matter where you are. Spaced Out Radio listeners will also receive 10% off their first visit. It's time for you to make time for you. The Spaced Out Radio Network can be found at spacedoutradio.com. Hi there, this is Dave Scott. Here you can join the latest on our weekly shows and news from around the world involving UFOs, cover-ups, cryptids, ghosts, and more. Read articles from our very talented staff and check out our weekly tarot card reading from psychic Catherine. You can also sign up for free on our forum and tell us about your experiences. Spacedoutradio.com. Always live, always interactive. Ready to find out what's flying up in the sky? Me too. Hi there, this is Rich Giordano. Please join me every Sunday night at 7 for the AZ UFO Show. It's a fast and compelling two-hour show on UFOs, extraterrestrials, conspiracy theories, and much more. Every week we will have great guests and great topics to try and answer the ultimate question, are we alone in this universe or not? So tune in to the AZ UFO Show with me, Rich Giordano, Right here on the Spaced Out Radio Network at spacedoutradio.com. Would you like to connect with Dave and his guests? 
Learn more at spacedoutradio.com. Get the latest news, features, photos, and articles. Spacedoutradio.com is where you can stay up to date on what's happening around the world and up in the stars. And now, back to Dave Scott. Welcome back to the second half hour of Space Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott, battling a throat cold, so please bear with me. We are pressing through this one. Tomorrow night on the show, Bob Mitchell will join us. He's a Canadian ufologist. Him and I have something in common, too. We're both former sports reporters, so I'm sure we uh, know a few people. I've never talked to Bob on the phone, but I'm pretty sure we ran into each other in a few scrums back in the day covering sports in Canada here. We're going to be talking aliens and ufology here in Canada because we focus a lot on the United States, but there's a little bit of a UFO sighting trend around Canada as well. So that's what we're going with tomorrow night. Hey, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do so at Spaced Out Radio. You can give our Facebook page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show, as well as join our private groups, Podcast Central and Spaced Out Radio. On Instagram, I can be followed at Dave Scott, S-O-R. And, of course, you can now sign up for our YouTube channel, Space Out Radio Show. And if you go over to Spreaker, where we're moving this show, as soon as my voice gets better and as soon as my computer gets better, we're going to run some test shows, hopefully here in the next few days, once my computer is fixed. And then hopefully within the next week or two, we're going to be over there full time. So you can check us out, Space Out Radio Show on Spreaker as well. Make sure you give us a follow. We want 1,000 followers to take to iHeartRadio when we apply to go over there. Tonight we are talking with Elizabeth Anglin. She's an animal communicator, psychic, Reiki master, ET experiencer. Her website, ElizabethAnglin.com. Elizabeth, thank you so much for joining us. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. Man, you, you you totally distracted me with this whole um, sports, uh, sports reporter stuff because um, I'm a terrible, I'm a terribly, terrible hockey fan. And I and I, now I want to talk about the all-star game and between the Avalanche and the Red Wings and, and how Ray Bork was better than you know, everybody else. <laughs> it's like, uh, okay, I'll stop. Let's talk about animals, but don't get me started on hockey. I won't well, you know, you know, <laughs> you know, you know what? I'm I'm gonna fill you in on a little hockey story here before we go on. Okay. Today was if you if you're a hockey fan, today was the NHL trade deadline, where teams right. can move players for the final time uh, before they make their uh, playoff run or finish off the season for a draft pick. Anyways, 10 years ago, hard to believe, 10 years ago already, I am in what we call the media war room for the Vancouver Canucks. And I'd been working my butt off to get a, to get an in in the dressing room. And I finally got an in to this one player named Steve McCarthy. And uh, he... And he, before I got into radio journalism, I was a hockey instructor. And I, I trained a kid that he knew. And, and that's, you know, you're always looking for some sort of in. And mm-hmm. so he's playing for the Canucks. And he gets traded. So I call him up and I said, hey, Steve. He goes, hey, Dave, how's it going? I said, good. <laughs> Excuse me. And he go I said, So what do you think of the news? He goes, What news? I said, You haven't heard? He goes, Heard what? I said, Dude, you've been traded. He goes, Oh no. To who? I said, Atlanta. He goes, For what? I said, Future considerations. He goes, Oh no, my wife's gonna kill me. <laughs> we just got all our <laughs> Excuse me. He goes, we just moved all our stuff here from Chicago three weeks ago. He goes, I'm a dead man. And ever since then, he told me, I called him a few hours later on his request. And he told me he waited another two hours before he found out from the hockey team that he had been moved. Yeah. 
So uh, that's that's my infamous hockey story. And but the poor we're not guy. Talking hockey tonight. I know, but you know, I, for the rest of the story, you guys, he got moved a lot. <laughs> he went to he went to Russia. He, he, yes, he did. He, yes, he's he did. now at the Lake Erie Monsters. So poor guy. Oh, yes. Uh, Okay, let's talk about so, animals. I'm just sad. I'm sad for season first with all that moving. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's get uh right to uh animals here. Let's talk household pets. If somebody mm-hmm. wanted to learn how to communicate with their cat or their dog, what would be the first mm-hmm. steps? You know, I I really like there are a couple different ways you can go about it. I always morph some aspects of, of meditation and Reiki of meditation and energy work, but uh, it's good to make, don't, um, you really need to know, you really need the meditation and and especially something like Zen meditation. There are lots of different forms of meditation, but beginning with a meditation that allows you to witness your own thoughts so that you understand and are really familiar with how your own thoughts appear to you and how your own thoughts are directed by some part of your consciousness, uh, whether it's your your waking conscious, your subconscious, uh, a memory, a desire. And then there's a completely different feeling. You know, once you become familiar with how your own thoughts work and how they present and how they appear, because we do see things in our brains when we're thinking, we do hear things, we do feel things. So, for example, if I want to think about 9-11, you know, something very traumatic, it will make my body feel a certain way. I will have certain visions and I might want to cry. Um, And that's not, that's in some way just me connecting to my memories of it or my previous thoughts of it. But when the information is coming from a being that maybe you've never met this being, maybe it is your cat, maybe it is your dog, Um, you want to be able to understand that other people's feelings, thoughts, and visions look different. And until you recognize what your own are, it's hard to tell that something that is coming from outside of you, how it feels, what it looks like, or that it's something different. And... Um, so the first thing is so the first thing is to be disciplined and meditation gives you that sort of discipline with your own thought, discipline to learn how to overcome your reactive mind, and discipline to to learn how to to learn what your own egoic thoughts are. You know, you might want to hear from your dog that that your dog just thinks that, you know, everything you think is what it thinks. And that's not always your that's not always true. Your, your dog, your cat, your horse, your, your gerbil will have different thoughts, feelings, opinions than you do. And if you're coming into animal communication wanting validation for your own thoughts about things, it's the wrong field. You know, go, um, go into politics and, and uh, get real powerful and then people can, you know, validate you. But don't, don't go into animal communication because outside animals think, different thoughts and and so recognizing the difference between yourself and someone other is really important and meditation can help you do that. Um, energy work, Qigong, Reiki, second degree Reiki has the most perfect protocol for consciously connecting with an animal being place or thing outside of yourself and energetically connecting to it. And consciousness and energy are the ways that we are all connected with each other. And here we have this really neat little healing art that has this perfect, simple, easy, easy to learn, easy to use connection protocol that takes less than 30 seconds to do. And so for anybody out there who has the money to learn first and second degree Reiki and has the discipline to practice first and second, degree Reiki, I would highly recommend that you go at least to second level. And I but I also recommend that you don't take it like a McDonald's class where you think, 
oh, well, I learned it. I don't have to practice it. It won't work for you if you don't practice because you won't be priming the pump of the energy and you won't be learning from it because you won't be practicing. And it's the same with meditation. You know, going to a weekend meditation class, you know, that's great. But if you meditate even 10, 15, 20 minutes a day, or if you can go to 40, if you, you know, you can do a minimal amount of meditation and see results. You know, I'd say 20 minutes. It's like, you know, the minimal amount of exercise. Do 20 minutes of meditation. If you learn Reiki, do the daily practice which can be up to an hour. It, it, I do secondary Reiki on myself, so it's usually 20 minutes. Um, so those are the two things that I would start out with if you're learning. There are, there are books, there are teachers. Some are better than others. Some are easier to learn from. Some have um, really strong opinions that animals are, are teachers, and so people go into their communications, wanting their animals to become their gurus, I would avoid that. You know, your animal may be wise and may be a shaman or may be a guru, or your animal may just want you to hang out with them more and feed them a different kind of food. You know, so don't get your, um, your animal, don't expect your animal has to become the guru. They really just most of them want to be your friend and hang out with you and sit on your feet and, as my cats did all day in during sessions, one was on my head, one was on my lap. <laughs> so, so, are they my gurus? I I felt help, you know, but no, they're not my gurus. So. Let me, ask, Elizabeth. Let me ask you here for a second. Is it easier to communicate with an animal like a dog that is supposed to be man's best friend compared to a cat which is pissed off because it's Wednesday at <laughs> seven forty six p.m. <laughs> Cats are not all that pissy. <laughs> you guys, you are so totally the dog lover. lover. Um, I, no, it's, it's, uh, cats can be wonderful to communicate with and funny. Cats, my feeling over time has been dogs usually won't lie. They'll, they'll only, very rarely will I get a dog lying. And, and so the usual thing is when you know, there's a squabble in the house between the house animals or somebody's pissing outside the cat box. And and you usually won't get a dog lying about what they did, but you'll get cats pointing at the other cat going, I didn't do it, he did it. <laughs> like, and the owner will know for sure. They will have witnessed the cat who's pointing at the other cat going, I didn't do it. He did with the cat who was pissing outside the litter box. So, you know, that's the worst thing about cats is the ones that that do wrong. Um, you know, they're crafty. They're cats. <laughs> if they can blame somebody else, they will. So, um, but other than that, no, they're not usually hard to talk to or with. So, so what is the biggest difference then when people are – trying to communicate with their animals. What kind of signs should they be looking for from the animal? Should they be in a quiet room? Should there be soft music playing? Is there a mood to set in order to try and gain that connection? Yes, it's a good idea. You know, your animal shouldn't be watching the paw watch for dinner. If you have, you know, pay attention. If you're going to hire an animal communicator or you're going to practice yourself, uh, I First of all, I'd say if you're going to practice, find a friend's animal to practice on because you're not as objective with your own. But if you're going to practice on your own or your friend or somebody you don't know, make sure that you're not scheduling your session at a time when they'll be sleeping or a time when they'll be eating or a time when they'll be waiting for somebody to feed them. Um, those things do not lead to good animal communication sessions because you know, they're they're used to getting fed now or they know they're about to be fed or, you know, they're sleepy and and it's hard for them. Uh, a room where you're quiet, where you might have, have sat down 10, 15, 20 minutes beforehand and just meditated lightly or dropped the concerns of the day, not be focusing on something else, just being present and focused and aware and in the room that your animal is in, maybe petting your animal, maybe talking to them a little bit the way that we do, you know, physically and verbally, 
and just being nicely connected to them and telling them, you know, I'm having an animal communicate with them or, you know, let's just sit here and pet for a little bit and then I want to talk to you, you know, for a little bit. And then have questions that you want to ask that they can answer. If you're doing animal communication on your own with a teacher, I always say, or if you're practicing and you're outside of class, write down your question for the animals and then write down what you perceive to be the animal's answer. And your perceptions will always be visual. You may see what the animal is saying, uh, this, uh, emotional, physical. You may feel something in your body and auditory. You may actually hear words. And the communication will vary animal by animal. Some animals are visually very, very strong. Some are very feeling strong and some are very physically strong and some are strong across the board. And it can also be the kind of day that you have. If you had a good day, a non-stressful day, it's going to be easier for you to communicate with your animal. If they had a good day, it's going to be easier. Also in times of trauma, it actually you get a lot of help from, from spirit guides and spirit to help you connect with your animal so you can get good guidance on how to deal with the trauma, you know. Do we go into surgery? Do we not? Do we, you know, do, is, are we getting ready for a transition or not? Um, is this animal, can we reintroduce these two animals that just have that or can we not? At those times, you'll find a lot of spiritual help with surround the animals and, and the people in the family to help try to give them good guidance and do it. So, um, you know, you want to sit and be quiet for a little bit so you can benefit from that spiritual help and direction. Whew, I can't talk anymore. I can agree. Thank you. A lot of people, Elizabeth, as we speak with Elizabeth Anglin tonight, her website, ElizabethAnglin.com, we're talking animal communication telepathically. A lot of people will probably get frustrated after 5, 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes of giving it a go and not getting what they feel or results because they don't know what to listen to in their head or they don't know mm -hmm. if the animal is truly paying attention. How long does this process take and how often should you work on this to try and build that communication line? Well, that's why I say work on somebody else's animal because the person, don't have them not tell you anything about what's going on with the animal, either veterinarian-wise, physically, anything that's going on with the house. Um, the best way to do the work is to not know anything about the subject that you're going to be reading for, but to have somebody there who can confirm and validate that you are getting uh, the issues at hand. Um, I had a, a really interesting reading. It was a, a woman in Minnesota who was known to be very skeptical and very mean, and she had brought a horse to a horse show um, and I was at the horse show picking up my horse, Otto, who recently died. But I was picking him up, and I went to the horse show in the process of picking him up. And she was there, and somebody set us up together because it, it was one of my clients who liked me. And she said, I'm going to set her up with the toughest person in the whole horse show. And when she wows her, she'll have clients galore. And I was like, well, thank you. But anyway, what happened was this tough woman had this horse. I I asked, nobody Nobody told me anything about the horse. I went into the horse's stall. I sat down on top of the bucket, and I did what I call an unsolicited reading. I said to the horse, I said the horse's name three times in my head, and then I said, this is Alyssa. I am here to communicate with you if that's okay with you. Is there anything you would like to tell me? And I sat down, and I just started writing, and I started writing what I was feeling, anything I began to feel, anything I began to see, any words that I heard. And this horse wrote, had me write two full pages of, please don't sell me, please don't sell me. I am your horse. I will be good for you. Please take me home. Please don't sell me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I did wrong. I'm sorry you fell off. <laughs> it went on and on and on. And the lady comes in, and I said, well, uh, I did it, the unsolicited, and I'll do unsolicited, and then I'll scan the body for to, to see if the body is okay or if there's a, a serious issue that could lead to it, but it being unsafe to ride the horse, either for the horse or the rider or both. So 
But the main thing is, of course, he didn't even care about the body scan. He was like, tell her, tell her, please don't tell me. The mean lady comes in. I said, well, he, he wasn't, I did his body scan. He wasn't that interested in it. He, he felt very urgently that he needed to say to you, please don't tell me, I'll be good for you. And I showed her the two pages of, please don't tell me, I'll be good. <laughs> and she just burst into tears. She just lost it all over the place. And I was like, oh, my gosh, you know, what, did I, what have we done? Well, she had brought the horse to the show in order to potentially sell him because she had fallen off of him and broken a bone in the year before and had become afraid to ride him. And, and he was promising her that he would take care of her and he would be good and he would do his best not to do that again. And at the show... When she had when she had had a rider try to take him out and show him off for potential buyers, he had just started fucking and running away and not listening and doing everything wrong. And so she was like, you know, are we gonna, what are we gonna do with the horse? Well, he was protesting the whole sales process. And then it, it made total sense to her that he was just really trying to protest the whole sales process. So when you read for somebody else, you get that verification. And you learn over time that what it feels like to be in connection with the animal when you're right on versus when it's, you know, with your own animals, you'll never really be clear because you'll be like, well, it's just me wanting it to be that way. But with other people's animals, you don't have any pre-existing information and you don't have any pre-existing deductions. You just have this blank canvas and the willingness to fill it up with whatever the animal wants to tell you. And then the owner can confirm it just simply. Are farm animals much easier to deal with than household pets? No, there's not a significant amount of difference. I love horses, and I know a lot about horses. And my first, you know, conscious animal communication was with horses, and I was working on an equine veterinarian when I began to practice professionally. So, and I, I know horse anatomy and horse science, and, and I've been one of the few state licensed riding instructors in America, and blah, 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 blah. I mean, you know, horse trivia, if there's a horse trivia pursuit, set me at it, I can with you. But because I love horses, and I always have, but there's no difference. If you love dogs, it's going to be easy for you to communicate with dogs. What happens is when you communicate, there is this portion of uh, communication is a low entropy art form. And so if you already have pre-existing knowledge of a subject area about, for example, horses or dogs or cats or cows or goats, your communication is going to be, it's going to touch on things that you already know if it is relevant to that particular animal. So, you know, read up. If you want to become the greatest dog whisperer of all time, read every good source of information on dog care, dog management, dog anatomy, dog pathophysiology. Go work with a dog vet um, because in your future communication, you're not just going to get information from the animal or from the animal's body. You're also going to get help by spirit in a sort of mediumistic way where you'll have spirit telling you. The animal won't know what to look for, but spirit will say, have them look for X, Y, Z. And if you don't have any knowledge of X, Y, Z stuck somewhere in your memory bank, you're not going to be able to give that message. But it's, it's more about what you already know or what you're willing to learn versus that any animal is more difficult than any other one. Fish were hard to me, but not so much. Anymore. Liz, pets are known and wild animals are known to be able to pick up on our fear very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. How are we supposed to get out of that fearfulness to get that clear communication with the animal, if they can pick that up. I'm thinking there's a lot of people who are intimidated by Rottweilers or pit bulls or German shepherd dogs. You know, a lot of people are mm -hmm. intimidated by cats. Okay, never mind the size of, say, a Clydesdale or, you know, a bull. 
or something along mm-hmm. those lines. So how do yeah. we get through that fear? Well, the first thing is heal yourself of your trauma. And if you're fear, I mean, that's why it's important to do a form of energy work like Reiki where you practice because when you start to practice, you practice on yourself. That's why it's important to do meditation. People do meditations and they find themselves, or Reiki, they find themselves back in a past life where, you know, they were bored by a bull. And so, of course, they're going to be afraid of bulls. Uh, or you'll find somebody who is, you know, either attacked by a dog in this life or another life. Or I've had clients go as far back as saber tooth tiger times to find out why they don't like cats or are afraid of cats because, well, they were way back when in the Paleolithic incarnation, they were eaten by a saber tooth tiger. Um, so the first thing is heal yourself because the animal communication is a healing art form. Heal yourself and become aware of your thoughts. And also become aware of your own need for drama. You know, people who like drama think victim victimize your thoughts. So they think more fearful thoughts like, oh, look, there's a Rottweiler. It's going to get me. Well, they don't realize that Rottweilers are guardian dogs. They're not guard dogs. They're guardian dogs, (laughs) which is basically... They guard the sheep. They're actually one of the more friendly dogs because they're guardians, not guard dogs. But they look big and scary. They're supposed to for cats. So exactly. You know, that's you know, don't don't t- don't don't indulge yourself in your drama. I think I would say, but also heal yourself of your drama and your trauma, and then go talk to animals. We are talking with Elizabeth Anglin tonight on Space Out Radio. Her website ElizabethAnglin dot com. Animal communication is the topic tonight as Elizabeth joins us for her appearance of the month. You can also listen to her show, Cosmic Passport, 8 p.m. Pacific, on Thursday night. So you can find more information on that at spacedoutradio.com as well. We're going to head out for a break at the top of the hour. When we come back, let's learn about wild animals. The Phoenix Lights, Roswell, secret military aircraft, flying saucers. Let's check out the sky together. Hi, this is Rich Giordano, host of the AZ UFO Show right here on the Spaced Out Radio Network. Every Sunday night at 7, we hit the airwaves to talk about the phenomenon of unidentified flying objects and more. We want to hear your stories. Maybe you've seen what many others have seen. Only one way to find out, the AZ UFO Show on Sunday nights on the Spaced Out Radio Network on spacedoutradio.com. Hi there, this is James Tyson, host of Spaced Out Weekends, and I know you're enjoying tonight's show with Dave Scott on Spaced Out Radio. I just wanted to remind you that Spaced Out Radio continues on the weekends with me. On Spaced Out Weekend, we hit the airwaves at www.spacedoutradio.com starting at 10 p.m. Pacific, 1 a.m. Eastern. We have great guests with interesting chats regarding all things paranormal, supernatural, cryptozoological, and much, much more. So tune in to Spaced Out Weekend and give us a listen. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, how can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit. And expect a miracle. Need a break but don't have the time? Tired of life's running around? Hi, this is Jolene from Revela- Relaxation and Readings. Let me help you in your time of need. From Reiki to Realm Readings, I can help provide you therapy for your mind, body, and soul. Check out my website at rivuletrnr.wix.com forward slash rivuletrnr. And if you're a listener of Spaced Out Radio, receive 10% off your first session. Rivulet Relaxation and Readings. And don't forget to give my Facebook page a like. It's time for you to make some important time for you. The Spaced Out Radio Network can be found at spacedoutradio.com. Hi there, this is Dave Scott. Here you can join the latest on our weekly shows and news from around the world involving UFOs, cover-ups, cryptids, ghosts, and more. Read articles from our very talented staff and check out our weekly tarot card reading from psychic Catherine. 
You can also sign up for free on our forum and tell us about your experiences. SpacedOutRadio.com. Always live, always interactive. The Webster Phenomena airs on Spaced Out Radio on Monday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. I'm your host, Patrick Webster Small, and I discovered extraterrestrials in the atmosphere, which led me to more discoveries developing the Webster Phenomena, which is the occurrence of extraterrestrials throughout nature. I will explain the Webster Phenomena and all my recent discoveries every Monday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Time, right here on Spaced Out Radio. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Want to call in to Spaced Out Radio? You can. 1-607-203-5344. You can tweet us at Spaced Out Radio or send us a message on Facebook at Spaced Out Radio. And now, back to the show, here's Dave Scott. Hour number two of Spaced Out Radio tonight. Thank you so much for being with us. Tomorrow night on the show, we are going to be talking aliens, ET contact. UFO is up here in Canada with author Bob Mitchell. He'll be joining us as we look at the Canadian side of UFOlogy. Tonight we are talking with Elizabeth Anglin. We're talking animal communication. And before we bring Elizabeth back on, I do want to remind you that you can follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Give our Facebook page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show. You can also ask to join our Spaced Out Radio group and our other group, Podcast Central. On Instagram, we can be followed at Dave Scott SOR, and of course, our YouTube channel is Spaced Out Radio Show. Once again, we bring in Elizabeth Anglin into Spaced Out Radio Land. Elizabeth, thank you so much. Thank you. I I would like to uh, talk about wild animals. We have a lot of people who. What, are, what is that clicking sound that we have going on on your end? Yeah, that yeah, might be me. Sucked. Okay. Were you tapping a pencil or something? No, I was. I was looking at the thread on my. Uh, now I'm getting everything on the e- email that's being posted on the show, but it's coming by email. I was trying to uh, read them and I'm clicking on them, so I stopped. I'm not uh, going to spy on oh, you good. guys and say it. Good. Good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good. Wild animals. We have a lot of people who live in rural areas, and there are bears, deer, coyotes, wolves, cougars around. Are they animals out in the wild that really want to be communicated with, or do they have a very vengeful and wary feeling about us men and women? They, You know, if you communicate in a friendly manner with them, uh, for the most part, if they are well, if they are fed, if they have all the water that they need, um, they will they will communicate in a friendly manner with you. And up in Colorado, we we kind of started that out, and it it happened in a strange way. Um, we had a, a lot of coyotes, um, and it was what happened was there was a snowstorm. I think it was mid-January, mid-February, really, really deep snowstorm. And I got this message from my spirit guide that I should go get in the ATV and go down the road and see what was there. Well, what was there was a coyote that was stuck in the fence. And the coyote had chewed off most of her leg. And um, my roommate came with me in the ATV. We went a little over half a mile away from our house in the whiteout snowstorm conditions. And on our mesa, you're not supposed to go out at all. But we found this coyote stuck in the fence, chewing her leg off, about to die and freeze to death. And, and so we went back and we got those, those fence clippers. And my big Tibetan Mastiff, Collie Mix Wyatt, came with us. And this coyote was communicating with us. At, with me telepathically that she was okay 
was whatever we had to do to her leg to get it out of the fence because we did have to manipulate it and we did have to um, manipulate the fence because it was really tightly bound around the lower leg, the lower back leg. And she was okay with that. And she communicated that she wasn't going to harm either of us and that she was incredibly grateful that we were there and that she was incredibly grateful and that the only thing she wanted to do was to get back to her family because coyotes have really great family bonds and they, they need to know what's going on with each other and they need to be with each other. And so we cut her down. She was too exhausted to go to leave. And so we're kind of looking at her and, and the worst thing she does is, you know, when Wyatt gets too close and she kind of, you know, makes a little coyote growl. It's not even a growl. She just kind of opens her mouth. But, and we thought, okay, let's just go because he's stressing her out. Let, let's let her rest and we'll come back. And we'll get some blankets if she's still here. We'll get blankets and water. And when we come back, if she's still here, we'll take her and we'll put her in the barn until she recuperates and then she can go find her family. Well, after we got the blankets and the water and something to transport her in, we went back, she had gone. She had already gone, you know, she had recovered enough so that she could go out and go toward her den, which she visualized to me where it was. And she visualized to me who was in the den. And, um, you know, I got I got all this communication that they didn't expect her to live, but that she might. And I saw her in the den, and her family members were licking the wound, and, and, and dogs have antibacterial stuff in there. You know, so they were taking care of her by licking her wound. And, um, you know, after that, we would see coyotes and they would, like their energy would come out and it would be, hey, it's you, hi, you know. <laughs> and it would be somebody who knew that family, knew that coyote. Oh, it's you, hi. You're, you know, they wouldn't necessarily stop or, and come closer to us but the energy, the thoughts were very friendly and very bright and very open. So, you know, start with kindness and compassion and be willing, if any of you are in contact with your spirit guides, um, be willing to listen to your spiritual guidance about how to be and how to treat wild animals because they will give you learning experiences and you want to be, you know, cautious, but you want to be forthcoming and compassionate in order to really fully engage with your learning experience. Elizabeth, where does a spirit animal come into play in regards to this? And I bring, I bring that up because my next question will be about a story that happened to me about a week and a half ago that I wanted to share with you and our listeners. But my spirit totem animal is a cougar. Does spirit uh-huh. animal have anything to play with the communication? Um, I always find that, that spirit totems or spirit animals do. And if your spirit animal, whatever it is, whether it's a salamander, a cougar, an osprey, a toad, if your spirit animal is showing up, it is calling you into connection and communication with uh, the deeper, grounded, wild aspects of the earth. And also with your subconscious, um, things about you that you could only learn about through connection with the animal world, with the natural world. Um, We are in such a a technologically advanced society, and this technology is all new, that we've forgotten that we have a lot of um, subconscious sort of Jungian stuff going on under the surface that is really mainly only accessible to us when we connect with nature. And so if your spirit animal is showing up for you, it's important to go to nature to find out what's going on with you and your unconscious, your subconscious. Is there healing? Is there a lesson? Is there a pattern? Is, is there a kind of Taoist harmony that needs to come forth from nature for you? So that's important. Marlena has a question in the Spaceo Radio chat room for you. And she is asking, 
what about communication with plants and insects that she seems to be able to communicate with them? Yeah, plants are awesome. And I, um, I've i always had good bee communication. Like if you think love at bees or even yellow jackets, although they're not my favorite, or, or, or even wasps, um, they will respond in kind. They will, they will not sting. You could even, you know, somebody else could have made a mess. I'm not sure about the Africanized one. They might, those might be pissed off all the time, but you know, your general bumblebee, I, I love bumblebees. I love honeybees and they're lovely to communicate with. Um, ants, I've been able to get ants to leave the house just by asking them nicely. Um, plants, there are plants, plants have personalities. There are male plants and female plants. And I used to have a plant that was male. I can't remember. I think he was, which kind he was. He was a freaking cut up. And, uh, you know, that is, and talking to plants and giving them love is, is such a, a wonderful, it ripples throughout all of the surrounding area when you, when you, Give something openness and love and and the compassion and love in your heart like a plant. Every bug, every everything that lives on that plant gets energized and gets that message. Trees, trees protect us all. They protect all the animals. They protect us. They give us air. You should go immediately if you have any inclination. Go sleep under a pine tree in a pine forest and have a conversation about what trees are here for because I would call them our big brothers. I think of them like the ants. They they take care of us. They take care of everybody. They're the most nurturing, wonderful beings that we've got here, and we really crap on them, not just cutting them down, but just all the pollution and stuff. Um, so go talk to a tree if you really want to learn something good. Sounds like such an insult. Go talk to a tree. Go talk. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, when you see, because the only trees that I talk to are very, very visual, and they tell you these visual stories about the whole because they are such an important part of the whole ecosystem, and and they love to tell these beautiful stories. So I think Tolkien, when he was, you know, when he was talking about the Ents and the Ents would tell these stories and it would take them a really, really, really long time. Communications from trees are kind of like that. Like you, you have to be willing to sleep under the tree or, or be under the tree for a while in order to get the whole story that whatever that tree is going to tell you. <laughs> because, like, so it's kind of a, an admonition to go slower and be willing to listen to the tree. So I want to talk to I want to talk to you about cougars for a moment. Mm-hmm. About a week and a half ago, uh, myself, Mrs. Space Out Radio, and the children, along with friends of ours, we do a hobby called geocaching, which is like okay. a scavenger hunt. And we went on this night trek into a forested area. And, of course, there's okay. snow all around. And we probably got 100 yards in when my own intuitiveness kicked in and I felt that there was a cougar around and it was a male cougar. It felt like a male presence. So of course, you know, we have two teenage girls with us and they're cackling like chickens as teenage girls do. And I immediately feel his presence getting stronger and stronger. I never saw him, but I immediately started trying to talk with him. And I just said, look, I said, my friend, we're not trying to um, impress on your territory. This is what we're doing. We're only going to be 30 to 40 minutes at maximum, and then we're out of here. And your your territory will be yours again. And he was mm-hmm. very grumpy, but I had to remind him that we weren't food, that the children weren't food. We meant no harm to him or his territory, but that we would be on a strict time limit. And he said to me very grumpily, okay, anything more than 40 minutes, I'm going to get pissed off. (laughs) And That's an an agreement. 
<laughs> exactly. And and yes. you know what? I felt him. I felt him like I like when I you know I've seen wild animals around. I I've you know you just know if you follow your instincts and people will know what I'm saying by this. If you follow your instincts, you'll just know. And mm-hmm. I felt him the entire time. And I was talking with him the other time, and I was letting him know where we were. So in that aspect, because a cougar is my animal totem, was I truly communicating with him, or was I hopeful and then hoping that he would get the message? No, I think you, you know, when your thoughts are focused enough, when you receive an energy that, that you can recognize it's not your own. And I I just looked at that, and there was an energy, a big energy out there that wasn't yours. Um, I feel like he he went around you in front of you and came over to the other side um, and, and looked at the girls a little bit more. But I feel as if, you know, he made an agreement with you, no matter how grumpily, and he respected that you talked to him even though he was grumpy about, you know, you noisy human to chase all the food away and disturb me. Um, you know, that's respectful. Um, and and you are you are focused enough to know what's outside of you and what is what is you and what's not you. Um, right. And for the beginner that's that. the yeah, the primary thing is having had enough meditation or enough energy work um, where you learn when something is you and when it's not you. And once you can do that, all of this stuff becomes starts to get clearer and clearer and clearer and clearer. Not you will always feel different than you. And there, and dealing with both on a daily basis is. In either energetically or through meditation or both is how you really refine the skill. And don't go into wacko land. Um, you know, if you're talking with not you all the time, then you have a different problem. But you should talk with not you sometimes during the day. You know what was weird during that hike is mm-hmm. I felt him all the way up on my right side. Mm-hmm. And when we when we got up kind of on the hill at the ridge where we needed to go into the valley and up on the other side, I totally picked up Bigfoot because there's Bigfoot in our area. Mm-hmm. But when but when we were coming back, it was weird because I no longer felt the Bigfoot. I knew the cougar was in the distance. But somewhere in the area in between where we were, it mm-hmm. felt totally extraterrestrial. Ooh. Well, you know, I'm wondering, is is your totem a black cougar? No, uh, tan brown. Tan brown. Okay, well, that's good. Um, yeah, I mean, it's... I I was just looking at the <laughs> I can confirm I saw him on your right side as you were going up. And then I saw something on your left in front of you to the left. Like if you looked at ten o'clock then as you got up the hill. But I thought that was him. I think it was just because you you made me make a deduction. Yeah, it was it was really weird because I even pointed out to Mrs. Space Note Radio, I said, because we're with people who are kind of Christian, so mm-hmm. we don't really talk about, and and I kept on saying we got to hurry up. There's something not right in this forest right now, and mm-hmm. the cougar wants us out of here, and I'm getting total extraterrestrial feelings right now. We got to go. We got to go. They don't want us here. Right. And we hurried right. and the he, hell up. Well, and, and there's another thing. It, it matters who you go into the forest with. If you go into the forest with somebody who's unconscious, ain't nobody wants you around. 
sorry. But, uh, and I'm not saying that your Christian friends are unconscious, but, you know, somebody who's not uh, respectful, not um, putting the message out, hey, it's me, this is what I'm doing, how are you doing today, uh, anything I can help with, blah, 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 you know, being part of the whole, um, then the wild animals can get real snippy about the fact that you're even there in their space while they have other things to be doing. Um, they, they, I mean, it sounds so mean, but a lot of them are just really done with us, human beings, because we are, and these are things I've heard. I'm not saying this. This is not my opinion, but these are things that I've heard. And I've heard a lot of wild animals. Because of people who go out into the wilderness, hunters that go out simply looking for the trophy, uh, people, hikers that go out simply looking to bag a peak, you know, being the weekend warriors, so they can go brag about it at work and not paying attention to anything that goes by them or they go by along the way. They're done with us. We're not paying attention to them, so why should they pay attention to us and, and we're morons? I think, I've heard that sort of thing in different areas when I've connected. So, you know, be open. Be part of the community. Say hi. Yeah. Well, it's funny because the picture that this male cougar was giving me of itself mm -hmm. was a very, very big boy, like a very old, mature, grumpy cat. But mm -hmm. he was a like he was a big, big boy, like a three, four hundred pound cat type, you know, as yeah. big as cougars can get. And energy, but he was yeah. yeah, but on the flip side, I do know, like at the end when we were exiting, I, I did let him know that, okay, we're near our vehicles now. Thank you for letting us go. You're more than welcome to wander around. We'll be out of here in a couple of minutes. And he was very appreciative of that. It wasn't like he was saying, okay, don't come back. But you could tell he was very mm -hmm. respectful of the fact that we kept our word. If you if you make an agreement, keep your agreement. If you make an offer, keep your offer. If you walk through the woods and say, if there's any way I can help you, please let me know. And then you find that you know you're having to do hands-on work with a coyote. Do the hands-on work with a coyote. That is the way that you build trust and respect with animals in the natural world. Keep keep it, the integrity going. There, there's no blowing smoke up a wild animal's butt. It's not going to happen, so don't do it. You're not going to get that com communication, especially if you live in an area. Never blow it. Never blow smoke. Always do what you say you're going to do. And right. Definitely decide that. Are there wild animals that we should just not try to communicate with? And I'm not saying like over in Africa or something like that, but I'm saying within our vicinity here, are there animals we should not communicate with? I don't see why. You know, you if you're in a physical proximity to a dangerous animal, get yourself to a place of safety as soon as you can. And I, for example, I would say rattlesnakes. People have this idea that, that you know. A lot of teachers are out there teaching that if you can you can do these magical things with wild animals or with animals, which mean you won't get hurt because you've communicated with the animal. Well, you know, that does not mean you go up to a rattlesnake and try to pat it on the head because rattlesnakes have very differing temperaments per individual. And so you might have one rattlesnake that will try to kill you from 20 yards away and go after you. And another one would be like, oh, yeah, I'll curl up around your legs and be your friend. So um, really know, learn about animals um, and learn about the differences between individuals and do as much, you know, natural book learning, television, documentary learning as you can possibly do before you do animal communication with wild animals. Even with horses, I've got horse people that want me to make their horses predictable. It doesn't happen. Your horse is always going to be unpredictable to a certain extent. 
What about what about something like a grizzly bear that's just angry about life? Hates uh, everything. You know what's so sad about the grizzly man, Timothy Treadwell? Um, I don't know how many of you have seen that movie, but I would highly suggest you you watch it. Um, Timothy Treadwell knew that the grizzly that killed him was bad news before it killed him. It, and and then there's a movie, and it, has, it shows him at the beginning of the movie, and he's communicating verbally and physically and otherwise with the, these grizzly bears. And you can tell that he knows the ones that he's talking with are okay. They're not going to hurt him. But then you see a picture of him with the bad bear. He looks a bit older and more sickly and like he hasn't had enough to eat. And he's grumpy. And Timothy, you can tell, is actually scared, but he's still photographing this bear. And he is so different from the bears that Timothy normally interacts with. You know, and the poor guy, he had to wait somewhere for the plane to come pick him up. What, you know, if he lives in the wilderness, people make fun of Timothy Treadwell because he stayed in the area where the bad bear was. He didn't have a way of communicating with the guy who was coming on the plane to pick him up. He had to be in that area. And so he is kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. And if you watch that movie, you can tell if you look at that bear that killed him, that it was a bad bear, that it was individually super bad. So I guess I'd have to say, yeah, be careful if you're going to go work with grizzlies. And don't give right. yourself only one way out like he did. Um, right. That didn't work. All right, Elizabeth, I'm going to throw you on hold for our final break of the night. We are talking with Elizabeth Anglin. Her website, elizabethanglin.com, Animal Telepathic Communication, our talk tonight. And once again, please forgive me for my voice. Trying to get over a cold. I do feel great. My voice does not. But we'll trudge through the final half hour of Space Out Radio coming up right after this. Want to find out what's coming up on the Spaced Out Radio Network? Go to spacedoutradio.com where you can find our daily list of shows and guests appearing throughout the week. Want to tell us your story? Be sure to sign up for the Spaced Out Forum for free. Maybe you have a psychic question. Drop in and say hi to Catherine in Cat's Corner. Spacedoutradio.com, your 24-hour source for UFOs, ghosts, conspiracies, and more. Check it out today. Are you one of many who's had a UFO or ET experience? Listen up. The AZ UFO Show is on every Sunday night at 7 on the Spaced Out Radio Network. We talk about UFO sightings across the globe, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, and more with me, Rich Giordano. I want you to know what's going on in the skies above you, so tune in to the AZ UFO Show on Spaced Out Radio Network on spacedoutradio.com right before Spaced Out Weekend. Our show is literally out of this world. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, how can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit. And expect a miracle. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Brand new discovery beats NASA. This is Patrick Webster Small bringing you the Webster Phenomena every Monday night at 8 p.m. And you know what we're going to do? 
We're going to talk about amazing stuff. Have amazing guests. That's all there is, man. You know the rest. There's ETs up in the sky. I'm going to tell you which way and why. And we're going to have a little combo about these ETs in the sky. We're going to chill. This is Patrick Webster Small, and I'll be seeing you every Monday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. Write it down on Spaced Out Radio. Is the 24-hour world starting to wear you down? Let me, from Rivulet Reiki and Ratings, lend you a hand. Hi, this is Jolene, and if you're in need of Reiki or a realm rating, come to my website, rivuletrnr.wix.com forward slash rivuletrnr, and let us help you out. At Rivulet, I specialize in healing your body, mind, and soul, no matter where you are. And be sure to check out the Rivulet R&R Facebook page for your best deals. Remember, it's time for you to make some time for you. Hi there, this is Jim Tyson, host of Spaced Out Weekend. When you've had a busy week and you're just wanting to chill out and relax, how about listening into my show? That's right, Spaced Out Weekend. I focus on the paranormal, the arcane, I even dip into the techie side of things, and much, much more. And I would love for you to come in and check it out. Remember, Spaced Out Radio goes seven days a week. Dave Scott, Monday through Friday, and me, Jim Tyson, rolling through the weekends. I look forward to having you stop by for a listen every Saturday and Sunday night, 1 a.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Pacific, only on Spaced Out Radio. Miss most of tonight's show? Don't worry, you didn't miss a thing. You can head to our website, where you can download the podcast at spacedoutradio.com. Now, back to tonight's show. Here's Dave Scott. Thank you so much for tuning in to Space Out Radio tonight. Absolutely love having all of you there in a packed house in the Space Out Radio chat room at Paranormal End of the Night and Paranormal Forum. Thank you so much for joining with us. Soon, we will be moving over to Spreaker. I'm hoping to get my computer fixed here in the next couple of days, waiting for a new fan to come in. Once that's installed, we've got the Skype issue figured out. We're going to be running some test shows, and boom. Then we're going to be off to Spreaker, leaving Blog Talk Radio in the dust. I do want to remind you, tomorrow night on the show, 10 p.m. Pacific, 1 a.m. Eastern, we will be having Bob Mitchell join us. We'll talk some hockey, because he's a sports reporter like I was, and we're talking aliens and UFOs. Tomorrow night, Bob Mitchell on the show. If you want to follow us on Twitter, you could do so at Spaced Out Radio on Facebook. Give our page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show, along with on Instagram, Dave Scott, S-O-R. Our YouTube channel is Spaced Out Radio Show. Give a subscription there. You can now follow us on Spreaker as we aim for a 1,000 people. Just go to Spreaker.com. You can sign up through Twitter or Facebook. Type in into the search, Space Out Radio Show, and give us a follow. We'd appreciate that. And our website, spacedoutradio.com. Once again, I apologize for the voice. Hopefully tomorrow night we'll be sounding a little bit better, as I do feel a lot better than what I did. I just sound like crap. I apologize for that. But for the final time tonight, we bring in animal communicator, psychic, ET contactee, Elizabeth Anglin, thank you so much, my dear, for joining us again tonight. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, we, we talked about wild animals in the last half mm-hmm. hour, communicating with them. That you know, when you go into the forest, you know whether it's a moose, a cougar, a bear. Let them know your presence. Let them know your time limit. Build that bond so that way they know what you're up to. What about? mystical creatures like Bigfoot or Dog Man, are we able to communicate with them as well? Yeah, you know, it's really funny. Um, on, on Thursday, I had Kiwani and Kelly Lapsir Rice on, and I was talking to them about um, the potential for working together to do like a Bigfoot-oriented animal communication class. And, and Kiwani was funny because he kind of peed me because he said, well, they're not animals. And I was like, I don't mean animals in a pejorative way, you know. And he's like, they're humans, they're not animals. But I, I, I don't mean animal pejoratively, like there's something different that we are. You know, we are, you can talk, this telepathy can be used with people who have Parkinson's, who are locked in, or have another kind of uh, 
you know, they may be mentally all there but can't speak. Um, animal communication is for human animals as well as all other animals in the animal kingdom. And it's also for animals in that we don't have, you know, an earth-based zoological uh, filing system for. Um, so uh, animal communication can be used on any sort of being for any sort of being to communicate. It can be used for mountain fairies, for dogmen, for um, you know, whatever you can think of. It can be used on other planets. It can be used across dimensions. All of these things that make up our physical reality are shot through with energy and consciousness. And we are all connected throughout all of the universe energetically and consciously. And especially we're able to tap into that when we focus when we have intent and when we have focus. But it's really important to work on your compassion, your meditation, um, and your intention when you're going to connect to whoever it is that you're going to connect with. And it's important to protect yourself as well. You need to know the difference between yourself and others. Uh, Right now, I have an other over here talking to me about going to bed soon. <laughs> my talk Wyatt. So, um, yeah, you can talk to any kind of animal, any kind of creature, if it actually exists. Uh-oh, you still there? I sure am. I was just having to hold back a sneeze. I apologize. Okay. Now, when it comes to Bigfoot, because they are so elusive and many people don't have that experience is Bigfoot really kind of, and I take Bigfoot as a very, very smart, intelligent creature. And I know we have differing, differing views. You believe it's more animalistic. I believe it's more spiritual and possibly a shape shifter, but we can agree to disagree on that uh, as we always do. But when you look at Bigfoot, have you ever had an experience in your meetings with Bigfoot where you've known months in advance that you've had that communication with them? Or has it always been very up close and personal when you've been when you lived in Colorado, now you're in New Mexico, but when you lived in Colorado that you could just feel them around and start talking with them? Um, they pre- in Colorado, they presented themselves to me. We had a hookup. We had a, somebody who was a very active big communi- Bigfoot communicator hook us up. Um, and what happened is they, I would get very clear messages from the old man or Siavitsu in Ute, which is the old man, that, that they were there and what they were doing. And he would tell me um, his interest in being my friend and, and, and he, or he would tell me what, you know, he brought the family to come look at me. So like the first very clear message of meeting was where he very clearly said, come outside. I was in the middle of something else. I was writing my book, I think. And I heard a very clear voice in my head, not my own say, come outside. And it was nine o'clock at night. It was dark. Come outside now. And I was like, wait, I'm in the middle of this paragraph. And he said, okay, come outside in 10 minutes. <laughs> you know? And I went outside, and I was told to walk to a certain spot where one of the side lights on the garage was like a spotlight on me. So I'm standing there under this motion sensor spotlight, and I can't see anything outside of the circle of light. And, and he says, you know, as I'm walking to the spot, He tells me where to stop. He says, stop right there, really clearly. And I can feel that they're off to my right, behind and to the side of the garage. And they're looking at me. And I just stand there for a bit. And he finally says, okay, you can go now. And so I walked back into the house. That's when the next day I found a very small Bigfoot child footprint. It was a bear. We never went barefoot up there. It was very squared off, and it was exactly where they thought they had been standing, and it was only one. Um, but it was very, very clear. They came to me, and were very, and he was very, very clear 
that he had come. Now, then when they would leave certain things around, they would tell me, you know, the, the mackerel may braids overnight in my horse's mane. That was his wife. And I would say, did you do this? And she'd say, yeah, me and my daughter, <laughs> you know, and they were very happy that they spent time with my horse who really liked them and liked the attention. So, you know, if you get an introduction or you introduce yourself again in a respectful way, in a way where you are willing to take direction, in a way where you are not being aggressive, in a way where you are giving some, in a way where you are allowing to be given to, um, you can have a back and forth with this book. Um, Liz, let me ask you this then, because I'm curious for my own sake here. Mm-hmm. When And you and I have had this conversation before, so I'll fill the audience in on this. When I moved up north from where I was in British Columbia down by Vancouver, one of the reasons why I moved up here was to improve my Bigfoot communication. Mm-hmm. At least that's that's what I've been spiritually told. So when I am told that in June this is where I'm supposed to go, this is where what I'm supposed to do, this is what I'm supposed to leave, this is what uh, is going to happen, is that Bigfoot then communicating that with me in a message, or is that my spirit guide's? telling me this is where your next interaction is going to happen. Because for me, it feels like this is where Bigfoot is telling me that they want that to happen. But I'm not sure mm-hmm. if it's the guides or the animal. Yeah, you, you, so you're still learning the difference between which being you're talking to. Um, Bigfoot will give you direction on where to go, um, where to camp, uh, what to do while you're there in order to have interaction. And it doesn't have to be your spirit guide doing it. It could be your Bigfoot friend, your Bigfoot family uh, presenting to you, here's an opportunity for us to get together and have an interaction. And here's the place to go, and here's where it's easiest for us. And they will have a reason for it. It won't just be to satisfy your curiosity. Um, they will either have some, you know, their children that they want to really have a look at you as a human, as a, as a hairless human, or uh, somebody else that they want to, you know, a communication that they want to have with you. So I would say go for it because your validation will come out of the experience. And your validation might not be exactly, you have to be careful what you read into the message and the direction. A lot of times people their ego will spin out of control when they get a direction. And if I go here and do this now, then I'm going to get this group. Or I'm going to become well, we will something magnificent and glorious and, and out of this world, you know, powerful if I go here and do this. No, just follow the direction. Um, in following the direction, there is a reward. But it's not a reward for your ego. It's a reward for your wisdom and your understanding and your energy body. And I can't say more than that. And and that makes sense to me in regards to that because it almost seems like the what they are trying to set up is something that is very peaceful and communicative. I don't believe that I'm actually going to see the creature, but I know it will see me. I already know that. But it's just mm-hmm. a matter of almost building that trust factor with the the creature. And mm-hmm. it just seems like it's something that is very natural that is supposed to happen. Is that the way Bigfoot likes it to happen? Yes, and it's something it's something very you 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 may not get a lot of physical things, you may get some, you may get a lot. You may get, you know, lots of rocks stacked in ways outside your tent door. You may get something else. You, you may get little gifts left for you, or you may not. But it, Bigfoot behaves in terms of communication very similarly to the way guides do when they're training their guidees 
to do something in the world. Um, when you first start working with guides, guides will give you quests to go on. And that doesn't mean like jump off this building, do something stupid. It's a quest of something that you might be a little bit afraid to do. A lot of people would be afraid to go out and hang out with Bigfoot. So it's very similar. A guide will usually give a guidee a quest that's a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit scary to go to. And the fact that you are willing to follow the direction, listen to the information, and actually show up and go and do that thing that might be a little bit scary, a little bit uncomfortable, or a little bit out of your way, means that you are ready, like you, you graduate through these stages of communication and validation. Um, but it's really important to stay in your heart and to do these things based out of compassion and love and not do them out of wanting to be the world's most famous Bigfoot communicator or the guy who finds out where Bigfoot is. No, there is a respect factor there, and I can understand that completely. Uh, what about a creature then like Dogman? Because mm-hmm. Dogman is starting to be seen in so many different areas of North America now, from its or- origins in Wisconsin and Michigan. And it seems to be popping up absolutely everywhere. Is this a creature that is more so like Bigfoot, where it's going to test you out and see what you're all about? Or is it a li- little bit more wild and a little bit more untamed like a grizzly bear would be? You know, I don't know much about Dog Man, and the only thing it's reminding me of, um, not that there can't be big wolves in, in Michigan City, Indiana, right outside of Chicago, but when I, this past year after my mom died, I was on a train from Ann Arbor, Michigan to Chicago, and I looked up urban area parking lot in Michigan City, Indiana, and there was the most humongous wolf in the parking lot looking not just at the train, but looking at me through the window in the train. And this wolf was huge. You know, wolves are big, but this was tall. This is a really big wolf. And it's just looking at the train and looking at me in the window. And this is just after my mother's memorial. And I was like, that wolf, that wolf was there for me. You know, that was, that was a message for me, whatever it was. It was kind of strengthening. It felt strengthening. And so my feeling about perhaps dog man is, is to strengthen human beings who are open to kind of dog strength or wolf strength or, or kind of a wildness to be strong and to be able to go it alone, but also be able to go it in a pack in the wilderness. Um, But I don't know much about Dogman. I haven't literally seen any being other than a skinwalker that scared the crap out of me, any being that's positive that is like a dog, other than a dog or a wolf. That is positive. I don't know. You've you've never told me the skinwalker story. i got to hear that. (laughs) I think I did in the group um, in Mancos, Colorado. I was I was moving to Telluride from New Mexico in 2008, and I went with a friend who was also a medium to Telluride for the weekend to check the town out and and also check out the the ranch that I ended up moving to. And we were coming back, and we were driving. She was driving, and she had a little bit of a lead foot, but all of a sudden. We both got creeped out, and we both knew that this being was running behind the car at 60 miles an hour, running behind the Jeep, and was was stalking us. It was it could go as fast as the car did. And she goes, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Because we could see it in our mind's eye, and it had these big, long nails. It was like a... It was like a man, but kind of like a werewolf. It had hair. It had the terrible eyes on the side. It had gnarly bad teeth, but it was kind of hunched over, a um, little bit hairy, a little bit hairless. 
in the astral plane running after the car. And so she starts speeding up and I start saying the Lord's Prayer and we can hear it on top of the soft top Jeep and its claws are coming into the soft top Jeep, jumped onto the Jeep. And we're on this back road in Mancos and it's on our Jeep and I'm saying the Lord's Prayer and as I say it through a couple of times, it, it can't hang on anymore because the light fills up the Jeep, Jeep and kind of pushes it off. Well, she's so scared, she keeps going fast, and she goes to pass a car in front of us because she's now going about 80. And as she's passing the car in front of us, a deer steps out into the road. And literally, we miss the deer by maybe an inch, maybe two inches, going 80 miles an hour. And I'm wow. still saying the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> so that's a skinwalker. I've heard other Navajo folks tell me that, yeah, that's what they do. They chase your car, and then they turn into a deer, and then they kill you because you're going too fast, and you smack into a deer at 80 miles an hour, and you're dead. So, and that's where they get the powers from killing people. So that I don't think is dog man. I think that's dead. No. Craft. No. So for people who want to communicate with Bigfoot or have an intrigue in trying to find out about Bigfoot, does Bigfoot already know about you before you've entered the forest? Like, does he already know your intentions? Is he that brilliant of a psychic of himself? Yeah, Bigfoot, you know, if if you ha- if you go with a group, I went with a group, and, and it, unfortunately I went with somebody who told me that they were going to be cool and they knew what to do, but they were quite aggressive. And we were invited to go. One of the guys was good, and he was willing to just sit and wait, but he did bring a gun, which was a mistake, and he did bring a camera. But he was willing to sit and wait and listen and watch all night long. And it was a cold night. The other guy was out walking toward exactly where the Bigfoot were, and it was a Bigfoot family, and there was a little girl with them, a little Bigfoot girl, who was terrified of human beings. And all of a sudden, I became this person who brought scary men and a man with a gun and a guy who didn't didn't follow direction into the woods. And so that did not work out well because they eventually got frustrated that the guy who wasn't following directions wouldn't just sit down and wait. Um, And, you know, they were willing to overlook the gun because the guy who had the gun was a a sheriff's deputy and he knew how to use it and not use it. They were willing to overlook everything else. But that walking up to them and knocking on trees and howling and being scary and loud was not overlookable. And, and so it didn't work out well. So, yeah, they, mm. you know, but they're willing to give you the benefit of the doubt if you're willing to be simply there to commune and communicate. And if they say, just stay in your spot, we'll come to you, just stay in your spot, they'll come to you. We're down to the final couple of minutes with Elizabeth Anglin tonight on Spaced Out Radio, as this show always seems to go by so quickly on every night. When you are around a Bigfoot, will you know what signs should you look for? Because the chances of seeing them being masters of camouflage is usually very tough. You know, if you're if if it's a cold day and you see a heat shimmer and your dog is barking on it, at, barking at it, um, that could be Bigfoot. Um, if um, you have any sort of mediumistic, telepathic, psychic communication skills and you get a very clear voice in your head telling you and showing you who they are, that's Bigfoot. Um, they will feel different than your own thoughts. They will present they'll present very strongly in your mind. Um, and, and if you see things that, um, you know... We did get a lot of trees that were kind of picked up they're picked up by the roots and turned upside down, and then the root end was up on the other tree. Um, so if you see a lot of bent over trees, that could be Bigfoot. It could be wind. Um, but if, a, if the root's up and 
you know, a crook of the next tree, that's probably Bigfoot. Um, so just pay attention. Pay attention to your mind, though. They'll talk to you in your mind, and they won't sound like you at all. Mm -hmm. Do you recommend people who are going into the wilderness looking for Bigfoot in bringing any sort of protection? Because there are theories out there that Bigfoot has a real nose for picking up gunpowder and does not appreciate the smell. They don't like any hunters. They don't like anybody who can hurt any of their family members or their women. Um, do you really need a gun in the wilderness? If you are paying attention to, if you're in the wilderness a lot, if you've learned everything that you need to learn from other people who are good with wildlife and your wildlife behavior, you probably don't need a gun. Um, there's always bear bells and bear spray instead of a gun if you're scared of bears. Um, you know, there's another way to do it besides the gun. So leave it at home. Mm -hmm. We are down to the final couple minutes here, Liz. I would love it if you took some time to tell people about your website, what they can find on there, where they can get a psychic reading from you, and, of course, about Cosmic Passport. Well, what's really cool is Corrine DeWinter is going to be on Cosmic Passport on Thursday, and she's a poet, and I love her poetry, and she's an artist, and she's an awesome writer, and she's been on Space Out Radio before, but she's never been interviewed by me. So please uh, stop by on Thursday night um, between, gosh, what time am, am I at? Between 8 and 10 Pacific. Um, if you would like a animal communication session, psychic reading, spirit meeting, sitting, um, Reiki treatment, intuitive healing, medical intuition, something or other. Check me out at elizabethanglin.com. If you want a tell-all book about my childhood as an ET experiencer, go to Amazon and you'll find Experience Memoirs of an Abducted Childhood. You'll really find out a lot about me. I have a very dry sense of humor. And um, it's a good representation of how I am. Um, and you might hate my guts after you read it, but you might, you know, find out I'm just kind of normal and goofy and dry. Um, but it's a good book, and it's on Amazon.com. And, uh, again, in, uh, ElizabethAngwin.com and Cosmic Passport are places to connect. Elizabeth, thank and, you so much, my friend. We will talk to you very, very soon. Okay. Love you. Love you all. See you later. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Do you have a topic or guest you'd like to hear on Spaced Out Radio? Email us, dave at spacedoutradio.com. Send us a quick message on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio or a message on our Facebook page, Spaced Out Radio. Once again, here's Dave Scott. And once again, I want to thank Elizabeth Anglin for being on Space Out Radio tonight. Thank you so much for putting up with my voice. I know it's trouble. I know it's not sounding very good, but I appreciate you putting up with me. I'll hopefully have it a little bit better for tomorrow night. Bob Mitchell will be our guest tomorrow night. We're talking UFOs, extraterrestrials, sightings in Canada. Maybe a little bit of hockey, too, because it was NHL trade deadline today. And I'm disappointed being a Canucks fan. Hey, follow us on Twitter, at Space Out Radio. Give our Facebook page a like, Space Out Radio Show. On YouTube, you can sign up and subscribe for our channel, Space Out Radio Show. On Instagram, Dave Scott, S-O-R. Don't forget to get signed up for Spreaker. We are heading over there very, very soon. Would love it if you could give us a follow. We want 1,000 signups. 1,000. That's our goal. Hey, you have a good night. I'm going to rest this voice. We'll talk to you in exactly 22 hours. Much love to all of you. Thank you. Good night.